You never forget your first horror story. I don't mean the one you literally read first. I mean the one that finally does it, the one that keeps you up at night and makes you feel like something's touching the back of your neck, the story that, even if for a moment, makes you feel afraid of looking at the dark hallways of your own home. We all fear the unknown, but the stories that make us feel as if the unknown has trespassed into our domain are the ones that stay with us. For my sake, and maybe even yours, I hope that this one stays with you as well. It starts on Monday night. The local soccer team played against their longtime rivals. I won't bother with the details, but suffice to say I hadn't felt so good in a long time. I spend way too much time cooped up in my own home, so yelling insults at some players on the field while drinking cheap beer was something I desperately needed. I make my way home, driving through the main highway until I descend through a small curve, reaching my building, Aquarius Residences, right at the end of a long, narrow street. The structure's facade looks old by now. What was once revolutionary in the 70s now looks like a big piece of concrete with its skin peeled off. The rickety elevator and the broken mirror just add to the charm. I live alone, however, and the immense space of the apartment is a luxury I wouldn't like to part with, especially in this economy. Half drunk, I manage to open the main doors and lock them behind me, can't trust anyone in this place and make my W.I. way towards the kitchen so I can pour myself some water. And that's when I see it. On the other side of the building, through my small windows, I can see a light. My neighbor's apartment lights are on. This wouldn't be so odd, were it not for the fact that he left for Italy over nine years ago. My country's economy is equivalent to that of the third world's, so it stands to reason that my neighbor moved earth and heaven to get an Italian citizenship. I've never been one of those lucky ones, I'm a native through and through. But I'm happy for him. I check my phone quickly, looking for my directory. Something's on my mind. I go down towards the letter G, and I find him, D. Giovanni. His picture shows him enjoying life in Milano still, so there's that. I know that old Manuel never rented his place to anyone. The law says you can't evict people, even if they don't pay rent, and we've all had bad experiences in that area. Manuel used to say that he would never sell his apartment, as he liked the idea of being able to return here one day. So, why are the lights on? I stay there looking for just a few minutes until I give up. I'm tired and drunk, and not in the mood to ponder questions like those. As I get in bed and close my eyes, I hear a strange, clicking noise far off in the distance. By the next day, everything seems normal. There are no lights on today. Still, being the curious sort, I ask the concierge what was up with that. She's a very intelligent woman, and she knows everything that goes on in the building. When I ask her if someone moved into Manuel's apartment, she looks confused. Says that the apartment is still empty, as far as she's concerned. Without much further thought, I go about my day, enduring working from home. My joints hurt from sitting in the same position for so long, but I push through. I read some troubling news regarding politics, and my mind wanders. It isn't until night falls and the shadows drape the stark walls of our building that the lights in the apartment in front on mine go on again. I'm still curious, so I keep on looking. I'm not able to see much, but at least I have a good ear. No sound comes from that place whatsoever. What is going on? I try to ignore it and go to sleep, but you can probably guess that someone with my kind of lifestyle has difficulty sleeping unless he's halfway drunk. To boot, I also feel hungry. Due to listening to my nocturnal impulses, 
I almost forget the fact that the lights on the other apartment are still on. They catch me by surprise, but I remain the darkness, looking for a snack while discreetly looking to see if someone shows any signs of life. And then, movement. A shadow. Something akin to hand peers from the corner of my eye. By the time I look at that spot, it's gone. But I swear I could see a black hand reaching out from that apartment's bedroom. Since it's so far away, it's difficult to tell. But I swear I saw it. Third night. Once again, I'm watching a game. This time on TV. Baseball. As you can expect, it takes way too long to end. I almost fall asleep watching it. By the time I wake up, it's 11 p.m. It's at this moment I realize I forgot to take out the trash. To be honest, the dispenser is like half a floor away from mine, so it's no big deal. That is to say, it wouldn't be a big deal if I wasn't so lazy. Nevertheless, I get up from the couch and pick up the bag. The lights are still on. No one else has notified this, almost as if. I'm the only one who notices it. I brush away those thoughts. As I exit my apartment, I realize it's the first time I've left it since Monday. I look at my neighbor's door, right in front of mine. Nothing seems to have changed. But I can see a faint light coming out from underneath. I'm not imagining this. Satisfied for now, I go down the stairs. I open up the chute and toss the garbage bag in there, holding down my breath to avoid the smell. And then I hear my neighbor's door open. Alarmed, I rush back up the stairs, only to hear a scurrying sound running towards my apartment. As I turn the corner and look up, I see a dark, large something rush inside my apartment. I yell at it and go after it. There's nothing inside. I close the doors behind me, locking them tight. I pull out my hammer from my toolbox kit and turn on every light. Starting with the living room, everything looks quiet and normal. My home is my turf, and I know every possible hiding spot. My mind wanders towards the closet doors in the study, the space behind the couch in the living room, and, of course, the shadows beneath my bed. All these spaces are empty. Leaving out, of course, the kitchen. My hand trembling, I approach the area carefully, opening up the larger drawers where an animal might have hidden itself. There's an unused bathroom slash laundry room there. When I was little, before I inherited this place, my mother would say that a man hid himself in that laundry room, waiting to take me if I didn't eat my food. I wish to all the heavens that that story were true right now, and that it was only just a man waiting for me in there. To my relief, there's no one there either. No one hiding in the shadows. I turn off the lights and decide to call it a night. Maybe I just imagined everything. Maybe living by myself is not good for the mind. Then, I realize it's very dark. My eyes look toward the windows. The lights are off in my neighbor's apartment. Ignoring that, I run to my bedroom and lock the door with a key. I check everything once more, under the bed, beneath the desk. Nothing here. I push my drawer in front of my door and cover myself with blankets. During the night, I hear the same clicking sound, only louder. It's not really a clicking sound, at that, try making a T sound, but let your tongue bounce off your teeth a bit. It sounds, off. Almost like an insect. As the hours pass, I can even hear it on the other side of the door. I'm not able to sleep during the whole night. I take the day off. No way I'm going to let nightfall reach me without solving this. 
I go down and ask the concierge for the apartment keys. I explain the situation as best as I can. I know it sounds crazy and she does not fully believe me, but something in her eyes tells me she understands something wrong is going on. At best, it's probably a good idea to check for any uninvited guests in an empty apartment. Since she's still very busy, she says she's only going to give me the keys if she can go inside with me by late afternoon. This isn't my preferred method, but I have no choice. I wait until noon, checking for every corner, looking for signs of any foul play inside my own home, only to find nothing. Around five o'clock, the concierge rings my bell. I'm ready to find out what's going on. The door opens quite easily, almost as if it had been used recently. Nothing in the apartment, at first glance, would seem out of the ordinary. Everything looks in order. Nothing looks dirty, however, which is odd. If this had been the only odd detail, however, I would have assumed that Manuel had told the concierge or someone to clean up the apartment every once in a while. Everything else looks normal, except for the fact that this isn't my neighbor's apartment. There's nothing in here that resembles Manuel's place. The couches are different. The paint on the walls is all wrong. This looks nothing like the apartment used to look. I give the concierge a concerned look, and she's in shock too. We look at the whole place, turning it upside down. Every last room looks lived in. The only noticeable aberration is the bathroom and kitchen. The trash cans are filled with insects, as if someone hadn't taken it out in almost a week or so. I'm calling the police, the concierge says. This doesn't make sense. I wait with her for an hour until they get here. We explain the situation as best as we can, but it's difficult. They search both my apartment and Manuel's. After thirty minutes or so, they give up. It certainly is odd. We'll file a report and come back tomorrow. Sometimes we get squatters in abandoned buildings, but this is most unusual. Why? I ask. Because it's just one apartment. Well, that and the fact that there are no IDs on that place. The whole apartment's decorated as if someone has been living there for years, but they have no pictures of themselves, passports, or anything related. Something inside my brain clicks, as if I had skipped a step on the way down, but I noticed it. I try to remember something, but I can't tell what it is. We thank the police and say goodbye to each other. Night has fallen already. I don't know what to do anymore. Nothing makes sense, but at least they know something's up. I open the door to my apartment. The kitchen light is on. Curious, I walk slowly towards it. I try to make no sound. By the time I get there, everything seems normal. Then the clicking sound begins anew. It's louder this time. It's coming from the laundry room. A pair of long, hairy hands with black nails slowly creep out from the doorframe. I am livid as a walking shadow emerges. I try to look at it, but a splitting headache overtakes me once I look at its face. Large teeth, no pupils, long hair. I. I don't remember exactly what I saw. Only its wide grin as it approached me. I felt its claws caressing my back as I lay on the floor. I understand now. The moment we are put on on this earth, we start to be forgotten. I awoke to the morning light, thinking I was safe. No one called me from work. I wasn't notified of anything else. My correspondence and data didn't exist. There weren't any pictures of me, but I still have my face. For now, I still have my body. 
I tried talking to people outside my apartment, but no one seems to notice. They somewhat pay attention to the fact I'm there, but they seem to notice me less and less. I no longer need to eat. Something inside me feels like it's vanishing. But I still have my body, for now. I will write this story. Maybe, if enough people read it, no one will forget me. Or maybe they'll only know the story, and not the author. I've wasted too much time writing this. Maybe I can't escape it. Oh well. I all else fails, I'll just leave the apartment lights on.